because when we say agile, agile we bring in for quick feedback. Agile we bring in for you know uh, uh, we don't have a requirement clarity, so that kind of project is best suited for agile. So this by itself is a motivating factor where we can implement agile. Yes, please. I have a question here. Sure. If let's say we go for agile mm -hmm. thought process or agile methodology, and, and we buy one watch product or ready-made ERP and implement it and go for customization, then then we how will we reach our our next okay. target? So the thing is, when we are buying a, a product, right? We are not thinking of agile. Agile is a methodology. Right. The need of the product is different. There is some reason. Now, which methodology to adopt? Now, why clients are asking for Ajay? Because everybody is talking Ajay. So, there may be, so they have to actually see whether what is the kind of Ajay that we can fit in. And that is what I have tried to put here. Right? So, the need is you select a product and then you figure out what is the best methodology. Okay. So, uh, potential approach. Basically, first thing. Uh, you know, that I've written here and there, and in fact, I'll, I'll bring in all three. So, emphasize working functionality over documentation. So, first thing, what we say is, um, you try to see what are, are the core functionality that you are expecting from that product. Try to, try to, you know, pick up a small functionality and try to implement it. Now, what we do is when there is, there is a huge ERP product, we divide it into multiple modules. So your skill lies in selecting whatever is the small module that we can do and see whether that fits up requirement or not. So pick, uh, picking up this small uh, small portion and you know the catch lies in what is that minimum investment that we can do. So either you can borrow the entire ERP and purchase that, or is there a possibility of you know first trying a certain component of it, working on it and seeing whether it's meeting our requirement. So the catch lies there. And uh, we say, um, you know, that iterative, iterative approach is something which is which we all understand. Now, now there are a couple of points which I have learned based on my discussion with the with the projects in the implementation area. So, uh, since core product is properly analyzed, selected to fit majority. Of, okay. Now, user story. So, in agile, we talk of user story requirements and all. Now, the amount of research that goes in decision in deciding which product to to go for buying itself by by that by doing that process you by default come up with certain list of requirements that you have so some level of groundwork you already do so it's not like that you are you have a set of requirements now you're going to write the you know, define them break them down to smaller requirements and write the user stories so that process is already started by the time you sell the product okay now uh, <coughs> Now, okay. Now, when we have selected a product, so we already have a product vision in mind, right? So all these points are in line with the way we do an agile product development, agile the way we uh, use agile, whether it's Scrum or Kanban or whatever, right? So we already have a product idea in mind. We already have a product vision in mind. What? And we, as a team, have already invested a lot of time in coming up with a list of requirements. Yeah. How do you make a balance between functional requirement and non-functional requirement? Let me just share one small experience. Yep. We bought one quartz package. Over a period of time, we found out there were serious gaps in the non-functional requirement. For example, the fault failover was not working fine. Okay. The load balancer was, was not working fine. But generally, the way people split up the user story is functional first and non-functional okay. later on. And we found out major issues there. So what do you think? Uh, uh, where was the problem area? Did you, you might have done a little subtraction of that. What could have saved that? I think uh, personally, the problem was probably the way we were splitting the work. We kind of uh, we didn't put much uh, sufficient emphasis on the non-functional aspect, which we, we should have. So there's so the answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. So I just wanted to share the perspective yeah, as well. Yeah. Do you have any further to no, so so how do you make balance? No, no. So 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 actually, it is when we talk of courts. We have list of requirements. We just keep on, you know, evolving that and having discussions. So there is, so the way we do any typical requirement for any <coughs> non-cost product, the method is do same. Writing user stories is same, but it's it's that because there are various aspects of it. Now nobody would have imagined a technical fault on the load balancer side that we overlooked could have created a problem. So one of the points that I've written here is, in fact, I'll, I'll just 
uh, to the last point. No matter how you decide to estimate the user story, it's absolutely critical for vendor development resources to be actively involved. What I'm trying to say is that people who knows the product, they should also be part of that uh, initial requirement and decision phase. And then a couple of points like, uh, so I don't find any difference in the way user story workshop is done for a COTS or a non cots product. So what we are trying to identify here is whether uh, COTS or ERP implementation should we go for a jail or not? So my thought process is uh, because since it's a COTS product, you've already done a lot of uh, you know research in coming up with the requirements. So you already have a ground laid for going ahead with the agile development. Now, what should be the difference in the methodology? Because uh, this is a used product. There are number of interfaces, number of modules. So, for example, you take off uh, people's of financial is there and uh, there are multiple uh, oracle uh, sorry this there are multiple modules on different financial hr and all and when you are doing a large scale integration so the number of complexity so how we can do that so that is what i'm trying to cover in uh, okay this is again uh, nothing new here what we are trying to say here is uh, whenever you have a module you use your typical typical uh, agile methodology, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe a user story writing or user story mapping technique to break down the requirements. And that is what I have listed here. So basically, it's uh, so this theme, epic user stories and tasks. So it's, we all know this. We have a high level, you know, configuration phase and liquidity reporting data integration. So I'm just taking an example from a financial side. Then uh, we have broken down that into, you know, automation of external bank, develop liquidity. So. One point, I, uh, one point uh, I want to bring here, and uh, you know the key for agile is what you need to have a quick delivery, right? Quick delivery. Now, quick delivery means shorter sprint length. If you're doing a scrum, so I'm not. So here we are doing a scrum, shorter. So the catch lies in whether would you be able to break down your requirements to a level in the ERP side so that you can deliver something functional in two weeks of time. That is where the biggest question mark is, right? So that is what, uh, and there is absolutely no way out. If you have to do it, you have to do it. So it's more about changing the thought process of these people who are actually the developers and the architects. To so we have actually sat down with these team, and we have mandated them that you have to try it, you have to divide it, and they were able to come up with, you know, once it's all the mind, uh, you know, that that mental block that you have. We say the enterprise implementation is complex. So once uh, these people were able to come out with it, then it's the usual, it's the usual uh, you know, implementation of Scrum. So in the ERP side, the main problem lies in breaking down those functionality to a certain level where you can implement, you know, show something workable in two weeks of time, two or three weeks of time. Great. So uh, I'll skip this. So basically, this is uh, something which I wanted to show. What we have is, uh, it's kind of, uh, you know, this we have developed on our own. It is, you can say Vagile, Waterfall Agile, or whatever. But what we are saying is, uh, there is an initial phase, which is a planning phase. Planning phase. In planning phase, you can take it as a sprint zero, or a discovery sprint in a normal setup. So in ERP side, uh, here there is a question of data migration also. So you might have to work with DB people to set up the you know the, the weight for the for the database integration also. All that work is done here in this. So your user story creation and all this. Now this phase is where that is where we use technical agile. So when all the stories and everything has been laid out, now here there are multiple modules. So this exam this is for one component. So you you are picking up a small a component of it, breaking them down into. So you are picking the database uh, part of it and uh, coming up with the user stories, then implementing the Scrum only for the development and test and configuration. So it's uh, so this thing is done. Now this is where you might have this duration. You might you know it depends on the length of the. Uh, the amount of work, the amount of user stories that you have. So that is a separate thing. I am assuming that is there. And then you have integration, acceptance test, training for that. Because this is, in ERP side, this is one big area that you are implementing. So at the same time, you have to onboard the people who are about to use, uh, start using the functionality. Yes, please. The acceptance should not be with each 
Misha, please. No, so, okay, this acceptance is actually, that is where the difference is. We would still have acceptance here from so called person called product owner. So there would be a the client person will be working with us. So that acceptance is different, but this is end user acceptance is, you know, when you have done the integration, the final thing at a big level, the people would do and, you know, do the, and figure out whether everything is working fine or not. So there is something called a module level acceptance. A product owner would say that, yes, okay, this is working fine. That is different. This is the actual end user, because at this point in time, the end user may not be there. So this is the end user. And uh, the difference is that, you know, say this is a module A, right? Now, when you do a module B, that is where the integration would play. When you have integrated module A and B. And after that, you do a complete end user testing and then the training and go live support. So, so I'm a little confused. Yeah. Like in, in Agile, Agile it is, it is methodology it is mm -hmm. that like once sprint is finished, you have given, uh, it is finished. Now, oh, we will okay. not work on it. Okay. 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 So, how, how do we do that in this? Okay. So, his question is that. In Agile, we say once the sprint is done, once the product is, it should be in a shippable state, right. you do not come back on it. Right. Right? So I think similar question was asked in the previous session also. The thing is, the difference is, what is that shippable state that we are talking about? Right? Shippable in this environment cannot be where the, you know, after one sprint something is ready and you deploy it in production. Right. Because there are multiple integration points. But shippable is from that particular functionality it is done. No, for within the scope of that sprint, it should be done. When once you integrate it, after integration, you will definitely get a lot of challenge. You know, so you will you will reroute them back into the sprint. So what we are saying is, at a module level, so at this point, this is not one sprint. You might have ten sprint here to implement a particular module. After that, once you are done with this, so product owner has signed off. Signed off means product owner agree. Okay, what is the functionality it is doing? Now, when you come at this stage, integration, right? You integrate it with the previous developed module. That is where, and you ask the end user to do the test. So this is different from the earlier thing. Now, because this is a big product, there could be integration issues and all. So you cannot. So you can have a separate integration sprint also if you if you want to have, right? But uh, but the catch is that what is that shippable state? That is, that is not actually so in case you, let's 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 bring it to a um, typical flip part example now when you say what is the point in time where you want to have a release so release means something you want to take into production okay so for example I'm, I'm for, for for the purpose of uh, this question I'm taking now you do a let's take a example of shopping cart money so shopping cart would have, uh, what are the different components? Uh, let's say adding to the cart, creation of cart, adding to the cart. Then there could be a module called uh, shipping module where you will write the address and take all that and credit card information, right? Now, you might want to release after just creation of cart or you might say as a business decide that this doesn't make sense until unless people are able to buy it. So I don't want to release a half cooked product. The other person could say, I would still want to give the functionality of adding to the card because I know one week after I'm coming with the complete payment. So once the uh, you know shopping cart is ready, you know only the shopping cart is ready. That is where your product is ready, but it is not getting released. It will only get released after it gets integrated with the payment. But once you have done integration, you might see there is some integration issue, right? So at the shopping cart level, it is shippable, ready. At the payment module level, payment module is shipped already, but integration may bring out certain issues. So that is where uh, you know these this difference is. <coughs> In a typical web-based kind of a project, we could have uh, only we can we actually run only this portion. The difference that uh, is there in the ERP side that we want to say is that you have to dedicate time for you know uh, a data migration kind of thing. You have to dedicate time for creation of high-level story and then work on Scrum using our typical uh, you know, Scrum methodology. And once it is developed, then spend dedicated time in, in exclusive integration, user acceptance, to take the feedback and, and put it back here. So rub it back here. What benefit are you getting by doing this agile? I 
because design you are closing, requirement you are closing, SAT you are doing separately. Right, okay. So, so, so that is the thing. See, in in ERP side, what happens is, why we do agile? We simply do agile so that we develop and we see whether it is there or not. Whatever we finally need is there or not. Now, in the shortlisting of this entire course product, we already done a lot of research, but we don't know whether they exactly suit our requirement or not. Right. But in the end, don't you think that your time to market gets reduced, reducing the um, ROI for the customer? Because right? customer may want to st start seeing the benefits, you know, in month one, month two, month six. Right. That is not possible. See, what, what are that, is a, that is the challenge coming from the course environment. Right? So what you are saying makes a lot of sense if you are doing an independent product developer. But here, when I am saying course means it is a big product which would need, so generally these product takes one, one and a half to two years to implement across the organization. That is when you start getting the ROI. So to how to build an agile, now I am trying to fit agile in that. So these course and ERP implementation has been going for a lot of time in whatever standard. They have a standard methodology also, something called ASAP they have in ERP side. Right. But why everybody, because ASAP and all is fine, but we want to have good feedback. But how, how, how would you take it to the customer uh, in, in terms of you know selling the AGI um, in that particular so, so we are, or ERP? So we are not selling AGI. We are not selling AGI. We are no, absolutely not selling that. Right? Customer is asking for that. Okay. Okay. So what we are trying to do is see now the customer has started realizing everybody talks of quick feedback, and I want to show I, I can see and I can build in the change. So their mindset is that when I say agile in the proposal, I would not be charged separately for change requests or those kind of things. So from that mindset, they start saying agile. So that is where and we also and the team also find it really good because. In a typical ASAP methodology, that is the, the, the time when you get the feedback, something is not working fine, it is a little later. So, so we have tried to build in this portion. Nothing rocket science, but 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 you know, we left this portion as it is, but the development, so when you have the requirements, who stops you from using Scrum? Deliver, get feedback, show it to the customer, get feedback. How, how do we, we, we make a environment that change requests are accepted very well and our overall budget doesn't go off. So this is a very general question you are asking and the answer of that lies in uh, the typical, uh, so in, in fact, is, is cool. let, me, let me make it a little more complex and I will ask your suggestion, right? So you are asking how to incorporate change requests. I say so in this, in this uh, way. See the change request does not fit into this, no. this thing, right? I am trying to answer a bigger question. I put a question. Now you are asked to do a development in Agile and I do a fixed price contract with you. Right. And now how would you put bring in the change? A change to Ayaga. To so Kesa and Dukai. Any suggestion? Means you are signing, you are you are creating an RFP, or for that matter, RFP is done, you are writing an SOW. Now when uh, the contract is fixed price and we are doing Agile, so how would you handle change request? Customer can be agile. I can introduce change at any point in time. See, see, uh, in in fixed project, uh, fixed budget project, what what used to happen in waterfall uh, waterfall methodology, we used to deliver after after completing uh, after like step by step, and actual product is delivered in the end. Okay. Let's say it is one year project, so it needs to be delivered after yeah. one year. Okay. And after one year, actually. End users dynamics has changed. Then so we all know that challenge. But when we deliver like 15 days, 15 days, 15 days, uh -huh. within within three months you will come to know that okay, one module is not required at all. Okay. In in place another module is required. Right. So something is actually minus or you know. Ah, that is that is that that will happen. That is how it will help us uh, help us in fixed with project. In the end, you may have some some so, which are not. So what you are trying to say is what he's trying to say is what he's trying to say is same amount of equivalent requirement of hatao and equivalent cheese code also, I would not have a problem. Right. Right. But what basically it requires a longer inception phase in the beginning mm -hmm. so that you have got a backlog 
or you have got ground rules about estimation. Yes, Otherwise, yes. you will get into a debate that this feature is actually True. similar size or not. So it Very requires good. a longer iteration phase, the kind of inception phase you are adding in the beginning. Yeah. That is where we can kind of have this change for free and money for nothing. You can replace similar size features. And and see, there is no written scientific <laughs> rules about it. The, the thing is, when you write, write an SW, you have to be smart enough to add one line. So there is, as you said, what is a bigger change? I can add a line, anything which is a significant change in the requirement would incur extra cost. Now what is that significant? <coughs> so so we all struggle with that, but, but that's the way of life. Yeah. So any question, any question, <coughs> so, I have, so this could have been a really detailed discussion, but I was given half hour slot, and uh, in terms of time, I just jumped on the, on the main thing that I wanted to show. Any question at this point? Right. Uh, the last slide I have is I always use this slide wherever I go. Is uh, somebody asked? Uh, I think in the testing, what is agile and how we? Get. So I say that attitude changes everything, and agile is in the attitude. So if you are agile, so you can be agile. So it is you can be agile in anything, anywhere. So it's in your thought process. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.